Thanks to our sponsor, DoneDeal.ie, we bring you Business Bites. The best bits of that great business show served up in individual servings. Done Deal Motors is home to Ireland's largest range of new and premium used cars. That's why you'll find cars from Mercedes-Benz, Audi and BMW dealerships on Done Deal. Are you looking for a seven-seater to accommodate your growing family? Maybe you're after a luxury saloon to make a statement. We have the car for you. You'll also find Ireland's largest range of electric cars to help you make the switch. Visit dundeal.ie today to start the search for your next car. From episode 124, Jason Bradshaw of business advisors JPA Brinson Lawler explains how to maximise the value of your business. In response to your requests on this episode, we are bringing you a new feature called What is My Business Worth? We're going to be looking at the widest variety of businesses to see what they could be bought or sold for and how, as an owner, you can maximise value. Jason Bradshaw is corporate finance partner with business advisors JPA Brenton Lawler and we chose Jason as our advisor because last year he won Finance Magazine's Deal of the Year Award. There are so many sectors to choose from But we decided to start with the hardware sector, as in your local hardware store, because that's the sector that Jason won his award for, the big trophy, Jason Bradshaw. Welcome to That Great Business Show. Thanks, Connell. Thanks for having me. It was a great award. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. And you look really well there with the little badge there and the little (laughs) little trophy. I'm glad there's not a TV here. You're fine. (laughs) What is, how to, where do we start make a business worth more? And then how do you value a business where, if we're going to talk about the hardware sector, for example, there could be a hardware store in Mullingar. There could be a hardware store in Blanchardstown. They're both hardware stores, but they must be valued differently, correct or not? They would be valued differently. It really depends on the, um, I suppose, the sales mix of the hardware store, how big it is uh, in terms of their premises, in terms of the turnovers, the turn in one million or five million, uh, and what's the mix? Is it is it like largely cement or, or or timber? Because you know, in terms of different margins, so it really depends on each particular show. You'd have to look at it individually, but. A one million uh, business and a five million business. One million is a bit like a house. More people can afford a one million business than can afford the five million business. Therefore, I could argue you that one right, million you business right. but is worth the consolidators, more. you see, might not be interested in the one million business. Because and a it might consolidator be a little bit too, too, too for small. people like me means... What, is, what does that mean? Well, I suppose it's it, it's somebody like if Grafton Group or or any of the other um, I, I suppose group kind of owners, um, what, you know, if they want to buy a local hardware store, it would have to be up to a certain threshold in terms of turnover, square footage, too small, and profitability. No good. If it's too small, they probably won't look at it. So, um, but so they're just, the you, big consolidators. But are there little consolidators who want to become the next Grafton Group? There would be, there'd be there's there's a few around the country, um, and uh, you know there's some small groups that might have four or five different merchants around the country. They're looking to expand, um, and then I suppose on the larger scale, Grafton might be only interested in kind of uh, unique offerings or a specialised kind of distribution or merchant type of business, uh, like, like Proline Architecture, like the, like like the one that they, they bought uh, last year. Sorry, um, that's the one that you won your award for. You still correct, want to come back correct, to me all correct. the time. Correct, correct, correct. Yeah, Come yeah. here to me. If I go in and I do go into my local hardware store down in Sandy Mount, I'm always looking to see what do you think the margin might be? Do you do the same? Well, the gross margins are, are, are interesting. Um, do you walk into a store and look at them and say, could they be making 7%? Could they be making 15%? You'd have, I'd have an idea when you walk in the store. <laughs> okay. How? Or Depending why? on what they have in the store. Get away, uh, really? You, well, you what's, the, what's the giveaway? A giveaway, I suppose it's, it's a large square footage. It's it's the, it's the high end stuff, like possibly the paints or, or a value added stuff. Bigger where you're square a higher footage, margin. higher or lower margin? Should be higher because you're. So the, what you're telling me is go to your local small shop hardware local. St- shop. Shop uh, local is very shop important. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> but you're also telling me that their margins are lower. 
No, 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 not necessarily. They, 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 they could be hard. It really depends on the sales and what you're selling mm-hmm. because some hardware stores are, are might be selling stuff that, you know, a, a small convenience store might be selling in terms of uh, light bulbs or, or, or stuff like that. So it really just depends um, on the store. But generally, gross margins are, you'd expect to see uh, 25, 27% gross margin, net margin of 7, 8%. That's okay. It's okay. It's okay, yeah. yeah. So it's all about increasing the bottom line, Connell, as you know. So we have to keep increasing that profit. And you are the business advisor of all business advisors. So how do you manage, if you are running a hardware store, to squeeze that extra bit so that the graphing groups and all come knocking on the door? So I'd be looking at the opening hours. Are your opening hours too long? Can you cut them back? Um, too long? Yeah. I would have always imagined they're not long enough. No, well, if you looked at, say, on a, I don't know, just pick a Friday evening, say you're open till six o'clock, what sales are you doing on a Friday evening between five and six? Just as an example, um, it might make sense to close at five or 5.30 on a Friday. So you're saving on your wage cost, but you might actually not lose any material trade. So your profit for the day actually could be higher on a Friday by closing slightly earlier. Um, as an example, depending on where you're located. Um, so really, it's look at your opening hours, look at your rosters, make sure you don't have too many staff on, 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 I suppose, on your quiet days. Everyone will know what the quiet days are, depending on where the store is. So it's, I suppose it's all about increasing the, the bottom line. Look at your utility costs, go to your bunkers.ie, compare your electricity, your gas bills, um, and just make sure you're continually getting the best deals in every line of your business because all that uh, extra profit, you're multiplying that by maybe four to seven times uh, EBITDA. So in terms of a multiple... I told you never to say (laughs) that word in here. (laughs) Adjusted profit, net profit. Net, net profit. profit. Net and profit, the only yeah. profit that's important is net profit. Is exactly. that right? Your cash net profit. That's the one that goes to the back pocket if you're making it. Exactly. And if it's not being made, you're not in business really. Yeah. So you want to be getting that 7 per, seven to 8% up. And one other thing you did tell me off air was e commerce. The website. Mm. Sell on a website. Create something that you can sell on a website because not everybody does. Every hardware store owner needs to be online. If they're not online, they need to get online quick. If they are online, they need to continually improve the online offering um, and offer same day delivery. Um, this is why you'll inc- increase your turnover. You can increase your margin. Um, I suppose what's happening in the UK, and w- w- we always follow the UK, but there's there's a there's a website ecommonsense.com and fifty to sixty percent of what Hang you can. Hang on a second, now you skipped over that e what e. <laughs> <laughs> ecommonsense.com That's the one I don't have <laughs> Yeah, so that, that's growing strongly in the UK probably up to 60 to 70% of all products now you'll find in a physical store you can buy them on that deliver to your door the next day um, So if I'm looking for a paint or a screw or whatever I go on to ecommonsense.com and I cut out the local hardware store Exactly or Amazon But we're trying to support local businesses Exactly. Not so the business, Jeff the, Bezos, the, 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 the Jeff hardware Bezos owner, even richer. needs to be online. Okay. It, it, but now you have and you do deal with an awful lot of those companies. Is there a kind of a reticence or is there a laziness or call it what you will of those companies to go online? I mean, is it hard? Is it difficult? Is it costly? Well, COVID would, I suppose, have, would have fast forwarded a lot of local uh, merchants to go online. Um you know, so and I suppose at that time the government were offering grants to develop your website to to develop your. They still are. I think, I think. I think they'll still give you two and a half grand. I think. Yeah, and through your through your local enterprise um, board as well. So uh, it's it, it's really a necessity. It's not like a luxury anymore. I would say you need to be online. You need to be on Facebook, on Instagram. You need to be continually driving uh, your business to online sales. But you just told me to come back in your roster. There is no way that you can run your e-commerce website without hiring somebody else or finding somebody who is e-commerce competent. But it'll pay for itself. Do you think? Yeah, twice or threefold, okay. without a doubt. If you get a good marketing person online, um, that'll that'll drive, actually, it drives a few things. It drives more people to the store physically because you're in their minds more often. But it'll also drive your online sales. Um which can also improve your your bottom line. So really, 
you have to be online now. Will your friends, the consolidators, pay more for a local hardware store that has e-commerce rather than doesn't? I mean, presumably, if they see e-commerce, at least they think that you're somewhere near the 21st century. Well, if you're on e-commerce, you'll probably see your sales trends are increasing, where if you're not online, um, you know, I think what's coming down the tracks over the next three to five years is that your sales might actually start to decrease because of Amazon, because of ecommonsense.com and because of other uh, online um, companies that may actually start trading in the future. So it's a necessity. If you're not online, um, I think you will you, you could see a, a very material reduction in your turnover and your profits over the next three to five years. So it's key to success, really. And what kind of net profit must a unit, we call it a unit, a shop, be making before the consolidators are even interested? Do they have to be making 100,000, 500,000, a million? Well, I would say for, for the smaller group consolidators, I would say million and a half plus, million and a half, two net million plus. Net profit. Net profit you would want. But that's a chunky business. It is, but the margins are low. So if you're at 7%, you know, you, you, you need to be up at that turnover level. No, no, I'm, uh, not, I'm talking about profit then, not turnover. You're, I mean, that's what I'm saying. Is you, uh, Does the company have to knock out 2 million in profit? No, in turnover. In turnover, yeah. okay. Yeah. Because is there well, a Because there it a has profit? to make sense because yeah. you have a low... But is there a profit level that they, want to, that they need to see before they'll even open the discussion? Yeah, well, it needs to be adding, you know, two or three hundred thousand to the bottom line. That's really... W- so, you, you know, I suppose the local hardware owner that's maybe wishes to retire, maybe they'll say, stay in for a year or two, maybe they'll retire straight away. But when you put in a replacement cost for that for that seller for the, for that owner um you need to be you need to be making it, it worthwhile for, for the of course, later because yeah. it just it just doesn't work otherwise and how quickly does a sale happen how quickly can a sale happen so really uh, it it depends on how willing and able and ready the business owner is so as you say a business owner always needs to be ready to sell and there's a few key things on that that you need to be ready. Um, I suppose that's, they, they call it in the business kind of, uh, you do vendor due diligence, seller due diligence on yourself. So if you own the property, you need to make sure your folio is, is correctly uh, up to date with the land registry, etc. You need to make sure all your staff have proper employment contracts. You need to review your corporate structure. Do you need to put in place a holding company? Have you looked at your succession planning? So say when you, you, you get paid for the sale of your shares, um, does that make sense uh, commercially in terms of your tax structure? Because I always say to a business owner, what is your net take-home check? So if you have any bank debt, by the time you pay off your bank debt and you pay your capital gains tax, what is your net take-home check? So you have to have this all ready, like maybe one to two years in advance of even thinking of selling. So you need to get that completely up to date because if you have all that ready um, and then you decide to go to market, it's cutting down the timeline. So a typical timeline for a transaction might be four to six months from start to finish. Um, And these people are knocking on doors all of the time. They are. They are. There's a lot of consolidation in the sector and that will continue to increase. Um, So really, it's a great time to be selling your business. Valuations are down slightly from last year. Um, So that's where you really, really have to concentrate on your bottom line. And you better give me your name and company name as well because people will need to talk to you. Yes, it's Jason Bradshaw, JPA Brenson Lawler. Um, and Jason at JPA Brenson Lawler.com will get him on the email or on the website, JPA Brenson Lawler. Jason, thank you so much for Thanks, joining Colin. us on That Great Business Show. Want to increase sales, reduce overheads, and provide customers with a better service? Then use Big Red Web, the easiest way to develop and maintain your website. It gives you powerful business reporting, digital marketing, and automatically integrates with the award-winning Big Red Cloud Accounting software. It's a game changer for SME businesses. It's so good, the government gives you a €2,500 grant towards it. Big Red Web, e-commerce made simple. BigRedCloud.com forward slash web. De facto shaving oil, made only from natural oils. Nothing nasty on your skin. This interview was first posted on episode 124 of That Great Business Show. For more great business insights, listen back to the entire back catalogue of That Great Business